What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Tonight on this live, we will be doing Green Spot Chateau Montalena. This is Whiskey it? in the Six. I'm Rob. Yeah, that always happens. Tonight on this. There we go. <laughs> always forget to mute that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so Chateau Montalena, it's aged in California or Napa Valley, Zinfandel casks. Cool story behind this. Um, the owner of Chateau Montalena is actually an Irish guy. He moved to California and bought the vineyard or the winery or whatever you want to call it. He bought this company, Chateau Montalena. And um, when he did that, he always you know his heart was always in ireland and he wanted to work with something to do with ireland at some point so he collaborated with um mitchell and son which is also middleton distillery and they did this one right here the green spot finished in zinfandel wine casks so i'm gonna pour two because my buddy paulo is here as well we got a couple other things we want to do tonight, but the review is going to start with this. So that's the bottle. And this will be my last Irish whiskey for a while, unless I buy something cash drank, barrel proof, that sort of thing, because that's my thing. Um, start with a smaller one with this one. Got a bunch of people in the chat. Let's quickly say hello. Uh, we got Kenneth. What's going on? Blue Wing C. How are you? Tim. What's up, brother? Go Habs, how are you? You know, I love Go Habs, but I hate saying his name because every time I say his name, it's like I'm cheering for the Habs. <laughs> uh, Andrew, how are you, buddy? Michael, how's it going, bud? Tony, what's up? Mark Saliba, how are you, my friend? He says, March Madness and Whiskey in the Six, what a fun night. Well, I hope to be as fun as March Madness, but I'm not promising anything. Gregor, what's going on, buddy? Mash and Drum. What's going on, Jason? How are you, buddy? Eric Waits in the house from California. DJ, what's going on, DJ? Tom R is in the house. What's up, buddy? He says, who is this sexy bearded guy with the high and tight haircut? <laughs> um, I don't know. This My hair is getting a little too long, I think, at the top. I probably should have told him to cut a little bit more. Um, I think I got everybody. Loch Ness, what's going on? West Jolly, how are you? We got, oh, Whiskey Whistle, what's going on, Mark? How are you, buddy? I got to check out that video you posted earlier of what I believe is the same expression as this Lefroy 18 here, which is phenomenal stuff. So I hope you like it as much as I do. Um, Eric Wade says, Chateau Montalina is actually in Calistoga on the north end of Napa Valley. Very cool. Yeah, I think that says that right on the bottle, Calistoga, somewhere here. Or maybe the box or the tin, sorry. Anyway, um, so as you guys know, I actually really like my Irish whiskey Asian X bourbon casks. Green Spot has been doing wine cask expressions. There was the Bordeaux cask that my buddy Roy from Aquavite um, sent to me in a blind challenge. And then when I tasted that one, I'm like, I want to try another one or find that one at least and really give it a run through. Uh, but I could only find the Zinfandel instead of the Bordeaux. So uh, I believe the Bordeaux one came out in 2016 or something like that. This one came out more recently. But on the nose, super fruity. A lot of the fresh fruits are gone. It's more the like red fruits, um, berry type fruits. Would you agree, Paulo? There's a waxy note, uh, very prominent on the nose and on the palate with this whiskey. I uh, haven't gotten to the palate yet, but. <laughs> Loch Ness is saying this show is a guaranteed slam dunk. You're too kind, my friend. Hopefully, like um, RJ Barrett, he's a Canadian boy. Actually, funny story about RJ Barrett. When I was coaching for my grade eight team years ago this was years ago I, I can't remember what year it was but there was a guy named rj on the other team and he was draining shots 
from past center court, just better, like free, like free throws. Just better, better than you. Oh, way better than me. Um, and he looked like a man at at twelve years old. And I obviously have never confirmed the fact that it's the same guy, but I'm convinced. Like the age kind of makes sense. All That's those it. things make sense. That everything matches up, and the fact that I think he went to school in Mississauga as well. It matches up with where I was teaching at the time. So I'm pretty sure it was him, which is kind of cool. Anyway, back to uh, the green spot, Chateau Montalena. Really nice nose. Actually, now that it's been open for a while, the nose has improved quite a bit. Some orchard fruits in there as well. I'm getting a little bit of like a apple pie type note. On the palate... Really, really smooth. It's 46%. Obviously, we know that Irish whiskey is um, triple distilled. This one is no exception. It's triple distilled. It's a mix of malted and unmalted barley. It's aged from 7 to 10 years. It's a blend of whiskeys from 7 to 10 years. Um, I really like it. It's really nice. Berries. Yeah, a lot of berries on the palate and on the nose. Actually much more than I was getting when I first opened this bottle. When I first opened this bottle, it was super reserved. It's opened up quite a bit, just being open for about a month. Gregor is saying, I hope you didn't mind with the parody tribute video, Rob. Um, no feedback. It was just for fun. Honestly, I, Gregor, I haven't even seen it yet, buddy. <laughs> so um, I know that it was just for fun, and I'll have a look at it after. Uh, I apologize for not looking at it. James C's in the house. What's up, buddy? Yeah, the color is really nice too. I think this is unchill filtered and natural color. Um, but I could be wrong. It looks natural. Yeah. Let's see if it says it here. Does not say. It probably says somewhere there, but I'm just I'm not gonna focus too much time and should have figured that out earlier. <clears throat> A lot of really, really nice notes on the nose. Like, you get some, like, vanillas and definitely, like, dessert-like notes. And for a wine cask uh, Irish whiskey, this is probably my favorite so far. Other than the... Um, yes. Well, the, the... I was thinking the Springbank... Or sorry, the Redbreast 12-year-old uh, cask drink. I like the Redbreast 15. I like the Redbreast Lestal, but... I think I'm liking this one a little bit better right now. At first, this was worse, so it's weird how that happens sometimes. Yeah, uh, Mash and Drum is saying, very similar experience with the red spot getting more interesting as it opens. Yeah, I think that's probably to do with the red, the wine casks that they're using for these uh, spot whiskeys. Um, has it's got to be something to do with that because when i first opened this it was super drying it was almost too waxy now it's like really opened up very fruity it's crazy. yeah and mm -hmm. but like it's so irish whiskey is known to be like tropical fruits this is not mm -hmm. those types of fruits this is more like red fruits uh all the types of fruits that you would get out of like an oloroso sherry cask maybe even a sweeter version of that Scotch comic is asking if I've had teeling. I have not had teeling. Uh, there's a few that I was planning on buying for this. Perhaps I'll save them for next year when I do my uh, Irish whiskey series. Really, really nice. Maybe you need 46. Yeah, it's 46 on this one. <clears throat> all right, so we have a couple unboxings to do, but before I get to all of that, uh, I want to give this a mark. Originally, I was going to slaughter this one because I wasn't happy with it. I was going to give it probably like a 76, 77. Um, 
tonight's experience with it on a clean palate, on a palate that's ready to go, nose is functioning quite well. I'm getting a lot better than that. A um, lot more dynamic nose, much richer palate. So I'm going to say that this has probably gone up for me to about an 85, to be honest with you. So almost 10% difference. Um, so that just goes to show you the importance of letting your bottles air out. If it's not that good, first two pours, let it sit for a while, maybe pour out one more and trash it and then let it sit for a while just to get enough oxygen in that bottle to actually let it oxidize quite a bit because this is drastically better than it originally was. Yeah, really nice nose, very rich palate, and it's only seven to 10 years old, which is pretty impressive. I'm going to say that the, this is an A. This is an A for me. Really nice. Okay, so a couple things back here. Uh, I've been doing some selling in order to be doing some shopping, obviously. Um, I never sell for the purpose of saving. I sell for the purpose of buying more whiskey. Uh, bought this little book here. Um, I opened it up the other night, and I was thoroughly impressed with it. It's going to be a pain in the ass to open. There we go. Um, if you haven't picked up a bottle and you like Canadian rye, this is a whiskey that you're going to want. It's a combination of 40-year-old corn Canadian whiskey, probably coming out of Canadian club, 13-year-old uh, Canadian rye, um, likely coming out of Alberta, and then eight-year-old Kentucky rye. Um, it's a beam suntory product. So you're looking at probably like, like I said, Canadian club, um, Alberta. What's the one that I'm, I can't think of right now? It's, Alberta I think Alberta premium. Yeah. Alberta premium, 13 year old whiskey right there. So hundred uh, percent rye whiskey coming out of Alberta. Um, and the ABV on this one is 59.4%. I really, really like it. Uh, highly recommend it. It's not getting the best reviews, which is why I feel the need to say how much I like that. And I'm probably, I'm going to review that shortly. So we will have a pour of that tonight. We're also going to have a pour of this EH Taylor 2018 single barrel. Um, that's what we're going to start with after this. So I'll open that bad boy up. <clears throat> Just going to have a look at the chat over here. Scotch Comic is saying, by the way, great Leafs win last night. Yeah, they needed that one, man. It's been a rough go the last little while. It's starting to get a little scary. So Andrew says it's Alberta Distillers. Yeah, Alberta Distillers. Alberta Premium um, is owned by the same company so like alberta premium dark horse the guy that is currently running the show with canadian club actually made like the formula for that whiskey or the the combination for that whiskey so um it's specifically alberta premium but yeah alberta distilleries in general i guess I saw the Whiskey Exchange released an exclusive 26-year-old Marsala cask finished at 55.7%, but crazy price. Anyone try it? Uh, of what? Um, Marsala cask, 26-year-old what? Is it like Marsala wine age 26 years old? Can't be at 56%. Uh, All right, so we're going to pour this bad boy. What are you guys drinking tonight? Boost that up a little bit. That's not gonna work. <clears throat> Eric Waite saying, E.H. Taylor, nice. I just reviewed the small batch. Really liked it. Paid $50. Yeah, this one's a, 
this one, if you can get it retail at the LCBO, is a hundred dollars Canadian. Um, it's pretty much always on the shelf in Alberta for about the same, not that much more. Um, oh, uh, Gregor was talking about a green spot, so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty old green spot, Asian and Marsala cask. That's really cool. Okay, I'm gonna let this um, E. H. Taylor open up a little bit. I'm also gonna pour our drams of the little book so that they open up as well all right all right let's clear some of this out of the way I'll just finish up my jam over here of the green spot while these two are opening up. What are we drinking tonight, guys? <laughs> Peter White is having orange slices because he's sick as a dog. Scotch comic is drinking Balcones Baby Blue. Mash and Drum is also not feeling very well today. <laughs> this seems to be going around, man. Uh, Andrew is drinking the McAllen Edition 4. Tim is drinking Johnny Walker Green. Very nice. I, I got a review coming out of that very shortly. Although I say shortly, but there's... <laughs> on my floor, on my shelf, long and some more on the shelf. Yeah, it's a, it's on the long short list. It's it's like the short list that they tell you you're on when you want to be on, like uh, buying the next George T. Stag or William Larue Weller. They're getting six bottles, but there's 106 people on the list. So, in five years, maybe enough people will drop out that you'll get your chance. Jason Whiskey Wise is joined. Jason Whiskey Wise, what's going on, buddy? Jason's a night a night owl. Guy's always up late. I'm very curious to see what this one's like. This E. H. Taylor uh, single barrel. Apparently, uh, based on the batch. You can either get a really, really good one or a really, really not so good one. Um, from what I was told by my buddy who I trust very dearly uh, in Ohio, my good buddy Jason from the Mash and Drum, he said that the 2018s are really good. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Honestly, at first I was a little worried with that green spot, but it's gotten a lot better. Jeremy with his <laughs> with his typical 666 super chat. What's going on, buddy? He says, seems like every Thursday I'm working uh, the Sens game. Wish I was drinking. I'll need one after this dumpster <laughs> dumpster fire of a hockey club. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Jeremy hasn't been on the channel in a while because he's been so busy on Thursday nights. The Ottawa Senators are taking up his time. I'm sure he'd rather be here. Find a different team to follow. What's that? Has to find different teams. Yeah. <laughs> well, he doesn't like the uh, Ottawa Senators. He's just he's working the Ottawa Senators game tonight. Why is it always Ottawa? I don't know. It just happens to be on the Thursdays that he works. <laughs> the multi man cave keith what's going on buddy i just saw your review with mike that was a cool review i really liked it good stuff um keith if you guys don't know the multi man cave he has his own channel check him out how many do we have in the chat right now 39 39 very cool all right so if you are just tuning in now i quickly reviewed the green spot zinfandel uh, Chateau Montalena, and it got an A, so an 85, which was a very respectable mark. 
<clears throat> Take care, Jeremy. Thanks for dropping by, buddy. Appreciate it. So moving on to this E.H. Taylor bottled in bond, 50% single barrel. Um, from what I understand, it's going to be pretty much the exact same or the exact same mash bill as the barrel proof that I tried at Jeremy's house the other night. Uh, if you guys haven't had an opportunity to watch that video yet, Jeremy and I review all of the Buffalo Trace barrel proof whiskeys. So the George T. Stagg, William LaRue Weller, the um, E.H. Taylor barrel proof, the Stagg Jr. and the, what am I missing, Blantons uh, straight from the barrel. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my appearance tends to be the topic of conversation when we do this. As long as Daniel doesn't come in and start calling people jabronis, we're good. <laughs> it's a jabroni haircut. So not getting a huge amount of, like, the typical bourbon notes that I get on the nose, but there are like that brown sugar note, a little bit of oak. Jason, have a good night, buddy. Thanks for dropping by, buddy. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna go in for a sip. Not getting a ton on the nose, getting like a little bit of like a cola note, but not crazy amounts. A little bit of like a sugary cherry note. Still a little dim though. Yeah, see, um, I think this ABV works a lot better than the barrel proof ABV for this particular expression. Maybe it's because of the age, maybe just where it's located in the warehouse or whatever, but uh, this actually is really nice on the palate. The barrel proof was a lot hotter. It actually ranked, I can't remember exactly where, I think uh, second last or third last. It was very close to the uh, Stag Jr. So this one's a lot nicer in my opinion. More than you expect, so more than how much. <laughs> the multi man cave key says, I am jealous because I am old and fat now. <laughs> I think <laughs> we're not that far off in age, I think we're only like a couple years. I love you, Keith. You're a good guy, you're good for the ego. <laughs> um, uh, Gregor is saying, haha, untranslatable, this jabroni. <laughs> Jabroni, yeah, we're not going to get back into it. <laughs> Eric Wade saying, any distilleries in your area worth visiting? I'm thinking about flying up sometime this summer. There's a couple. There's actually more than a couple. So uh, the first guys that I would recommend going to, they're just starting off. They have a whole bunch of spirits out. I did a live with them probably about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. Uh, it's Last Straw. They're my good buddies. Um, they have a whole bunch of spirits already bottled. They're going to be bottling their first few whiskeys in the next like six months to a year, maybe a little bit less. Um, cause some of them are ready to be whiskeys and they just don't know if they want to put them out just yet. Uh, so stay tuned for last shot cause they're really, really cool guys and they're producing some really great stuff. Um, there's also, uh, Stillwater's distillery, which is stock and barrel. That, that's a pretty popular one. I think they're in the U.S. right now, too. Um, there's Lot 40 in close to Niagara, and then there's Dillon's in Niagara. So there's a few you can visit in the GTA. Oh, and there's the new one downtown, which is called uh, Spirit of York. So there's quite a few, actually, Eric. <laughs> Loch Ness is saying Rob had to cut his hair to get that small neck of that shirt over his head. Yeah, I, why do I have that big of a head? I guess maybe I got a big head. <laughs> so I'm gonna say like on the on the nose so far, I'm getting like a buttery sugar, but I'm not getting a lot. Like it's not in your face. Mm -hmm. 
but on the palate, it's a lot better. Like it's really, really nice on the palate. Yeah, that's honestly, you don't need to add water to that. I don't think anyway, would you? Maybe a drop to open up the nose if you, if you really needed to. I'm always afraid of adding water to bourbon, guys, because sometimes I add water and then I get this like strong grassy note that I wasn't looking for and I wanted like more of the same or maybe like amplified and I lost all that sweetness and all the notes that I loved about it. So I think it's almost sometimes better just to like sip it very slowly if it's barrel proof or if it's a little higher ABV because – you lose some of that high quality stuff that you want in a bourbon when you add water. I find anyway. Like an orange again. Yeah, there is actually. As soon as you said that, I picked it up on the nose too. Um, Eric Wade saying maybe we can do a meetup with Jeremy as well. Absolutely, buddy. Let me know when you're in town. I'll have you over for some pasta. Brandon just joined us. Brandon, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Donald's also in the house. How are you? Um, Go Habs is saying Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is available at the SAQ for $80 worth of pickup. I would definitely – actually, I just bought two today. Um, probably going to be getting three, actually. So I would say 100% worth of pickup. There's three different uh, barrel picks, I guess. Uh, profile one, profile two, profile three. I guess they're just different locations in the distillery or, or whatever they are because they pretty much use the same mash bill unless they're doing a rye. So um, I got I went with two of the profile two just because if I really like it, then I'll have a backup. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great price for Canadian dollars. Good on the SAQ to do that. I think that's a really cool idea. Nose is starting to open up a little bit, but I do get that like orange zest yeah. on the nose now, which is. Kind of cool. I've never really gotten that on a in a bourbon. <clears throat> National drum scene. The single barrel is eleven years, seven months old. Sorry, I missed that. What's that? National drum. Where was that? Further up. Down. Fork and blood. Oh. Um, yeah, so the, uh, Jason is saying from the Mash and Drum, he's saying a lot of people don't realize the single barrel is 11 years old, seven months. Wow. So that's almost 12 years old, which is actually really impressive now that I know that. Um, I actually really like it. Honestly, I do. I think it's, in my opinion, like head to head, like just from what I remember, because of the heat of the barrel proof, I like this one better. I like the fact that I could just sip and go. Uh, go Habs. I, I bought two. I haven't tasted any of them. I just went with the, <laughs> there's, like I said, there's three Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proofs at the SAQ. And I went with the one with the highest, uh, ABV. So, um, I'm a glutton for high ABV, I guess. Yeah, that's really nice. It's too bad they don't – I mean, they don't put the age statement on the George C. Stag. They don't put the age statement on the William LaRue Weller or any of that. Oh, no, they do. They put it on the Zazerac. They put it on the um, Eagle Rare. Yeah, ones no. But it would be nice to have that, like, even just written in the back, kind of like Elijah Craig does with their barrel proof. It's just, like, mm -hmm. the 12-year-old's written in the back. Just to have it, like, that's – that's something that people should know because you think like, why am I spending a hundred bucks on this bottle? Then you find out mm -hmm. that it's almost 12 years old, 12 year old bourbon's an old bourbon, right? So <clears throat> yeah. And the nose is actually really starting to open up right now. It's getting a lot nicer as it warms up in my hand a little bit. Uh, comic is saying from one time to the next do an uncorking of a grappa <laughs> i haven't done a grappa in a long time actually i should do a grappa 
soon. Samaroli, is that one there? You know? There's a, yeah, there's a Samaroli. There's, um, there's a whole bunch of, because uh, I live in an area where there's a lot of Italians. So um, the LCBO closest to me is the Italian designate LCBO. And there's a whole bunch of, of uh, great grappa there. So maybe I will do that. Maybe I will do a grappa soon. The only thing is like a lot of people hear the word grappa and they kind of like throw up in their mouth a little bit. <laughs> they probably got drunk on it when they were a kid at some point, tried a shot of it, didn't like it. But there's really well-aged grappas out there that are incredible. Even some of the like unaged grappas out there are incredible depending on what grape they used and that sort of stuff. Like they can get really, really nice. Yeah, Donner Pass Whiskey. What's going on, brother? How are you? Jay Chung, I don't know if he was here earlier, but I'm going to say hello again anyway. What's going on, brother? How are you? Uh, Jason Coates is in the house, and he's saying he loves grappa. Scotch Test Dummies in the house. What's going on, Scotty? Richie Z is jumping in. What's going on, bro? All right. All the boys are in now. Um, send the message really quick just uh, so I can highlight it. I'm not going to mark this because it was a neck pour, and I don't like marking on a neck pour, but stay tuned for this review guys because this one's gonna get a good mark i actually got this one in a trade and i'm really really happy with the trade now that i have opened this eric wade saying no joke one of the eh taylor labels uh submitted to the tbp tbb mistakenly stated he was born in the 17th century, yet he died in the 19 in 1923. So he would have been 300 years old. Nice. Hey, maybe he was. How old was like Noah <laughs> from the Bible? Like a thousand years old or something. Like that. Just on his joint. Yeah, Scotty. Tuning in late? Not you're not that late. We've we've just started. We've. Finished the green spot, which I gave an A2, 85, just in case you were curious. All right. For those of you that are tuning in now, it's the Chateau Montelena. Really, really nice stuff. That'll be my last Irish whiskey of the series. And then we moved on to the E.H. Taylor single barrel, which is a 2018. Uh, really, really nice. And then we're going to move on to, lastly, the Little Book uh, 2 which is two parts Canadian whiskey, one part American whiskey. <clears throat> Actually, I shouldn't say two parts and one part because I don't know the exact proportions of 40-year-old corn Canadian whiskey, 13-year-old rye Canadian whiskey, and 8-year-old um, Kentucky whiskey. But I'm going to assume that they're pretty close in portions. And then also, actually, the first thing I noticed when I opened this and tasted it is it reminded me, it took me back to when I did a barrel pull of the CC 41-year-old, um, which is 100% corn. So, uh, well, not the bottled version, but the barrel was 100% corn. So um, it was very reminiscent of that, which is really cool. Did you send the message? I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, I see it now. Oh, yeah, you have a wrench. You had one already. Most of my wrenches are in the chat. Don was saying if you're a fan of the JP Weiser dissertation, they have some at Summerhill. Yeah, dissertation has been popping up again uh, quite a bit. Dissertation is one of the better ones that they put out in the last little while, in my opinion. Um, obviously, if you're a fan of the show, you know that this one's my favorite that Wiser's been putting out for a while. Uh, it's the 11-year-old cast-strength rye or the 12-year-old cast-strength rye. If you have a chance to get the 12 or the 11-year-old stock up, because next year, apparently, they're going to no age statement, which is very, very disappointing. <clears throat> Mm. I'm happy I bought this bottle, or well, traded for it. Really, really nice. Hey, eh? what do you think? 
Что туда тоже? Scotch comic is saying little book sold out in a matter of a day. Can't find it in my area. Um, there are still a whole bunch available at the LCBO online. If you really want a little book, um, check it out. There's quite a few available. And if you know somebody in Ontario, they'll probably be able to ship it to you. No problem. So. Kale, what's going on, buddy? Ben is in the house. How are you? He's saying, how does the lot 40 ride? cash strength compared to kentucky owl rye man i really like that kentucky owl there's like a, a really nice bubble gum i i really like kentucky rye it's it's one of my favorite types of whiskey um michter's toasted barrel rye was my number one north american whiskey of the year uh in 2018 the kentucky owl is up there it's really really good it, it probably, if I did a North American Whiskey of the Year in 2017, the Kentucky Owl would have definitely been one or two. Um, I think I like it maybe just as much as the Law 40, maybe a touch better. But that was batch mm -hmm. one. I haven't tried batch two, and I don't know how good it is. So I can't speak to that one. Eric Wheel said, I'll trade you at Ardbeg Drum for um, Law 40. <laughs> We'll talk, Eric. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> That's really nice. I like that a lot. Cool, and you opened it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a first pour, very, very nice stuff. All right. Uh, we got about 22 minutes or so left in the show. Uh, 40 on. 40 on, very nice. I'm not going to... I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. Some days I'll go a little bit longer if I have a guest, but I would like to keep it to an hour if I can because um, they both have a like, mark on them. Um, it's just from the dishwasher. But, yeah, I would like to keep it at about an hour because sometimes these barrel strength whiskeys get me tongue-tied by the end of the show, and going on more than an hour is never a good thing. Okay, so moving on to the little book number two, which is, like I said, a combination of 40-year-old corn whiskey, 13-year-old Canadian rye whiskey, and 8-year-old uh, Kentucky rye whiskey. So right away, you get like a spearmint, um, almost like pine note um from the rye there's quite a bit of rye in here obviously it's 59.4 percent abv if you guys want to see the bottle it looks like that richie z is saying the little book batch one is harder to find now yeah i've, I've heard it's going for pretty big money too so um they're all going to be limited edition so it might be worth picking up i'm going to sip it uh at bottle strength and then i'm gonna add a touch of water because it is pretty hefty but what i wanted to say about this one and when i do my review on this one um i'll get a little bit more into detail about it i love the fact that they're doing some canadian whiskey in here that's bottled at cash strength i think that needs to happen way more often um i hope Beam Suntory takes notice and says, hey, why are we doing that for bookers when we could be doing that for Canadian Club? We could be doing that for Alberta Premium. They're all our brands. Why don't we make all of them grow instead of just one of them? Um, Canadian Club could really benefit from some barrel-proof whiskeys. If they did their 100% rye at barrel-proof, it would be phenomenal. They have great rye. Um, Alberta Premium, same thing. If the if Canadian Club decided to do their 20-year-old regular expression, which is 40% at cash strength, that would blow people away. So they need to start doing it because the water is obviously taking too much away from this Canadian whiskey that could be so much better, in my opinion. So when I first opened this, I was getting a lot of the corn. Now I'm getting it way more rye.
Gregor agrees. Good. As long as Gregor agrees, we're good. Although I need to see this parody that he did of me. Maybe, maybe I won't be agreeing with him afterward. We'll see if he, yeah. Uh, 59.4. Getting a lot more oak now, actually. That's probably coming from the 40 year old whiskey in here. All right, on the palette. So there are, there's obviously some heat here, but I don't know if it's because of the Canadian whiskey and the fact that Canadian whiskey tends to be a bit lighter, but you don't really need to add water. You get a, a bit of like that, like bite, but it's a nice bite and it's very well balanced. I know a lot of people that didn't think so, but I really like the balance of this. I think if you grew up drinking Canadian whiskey, you're going to love this whiskey because it drinks like a Canadian whiskey, drinks like a, like exactly how you would anticipate a cast strength Canadian whiskey to drink. So I love it. I really, really like this one. Uh, Edson is saying, what are you drinking? That's 40 years old. So there's 40 year old uh, corn whiskey in this little book. Number two. Um, I mentioned it a few times now, but one more time, it's 40 year old corn whiskey from Canada, um, 13 year old rye whiskey from Canada, and then eight year old Kentucky whiskey. So the oak on the palate too. yeah, definitely oak on the palate. That's definitely coming from the older whiskeys that are in this. Yeah, the um, Richie's he's asking is the Canadian the corn? Yes, it's forty year old Canadian corn whiskey from uh, Canadian Club. Yeah, exactly, Edson. It's it's most likely CC forty in there. <clears throat> Master Drum is saying every time you go back to it, it uh, changes like Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Well, just from the two times that I've gone to it it's changed completely. So I'm curious what's going to happen next. I like it a lot. I haven't been disappointed. This time it's more rye heavy. Last time it was more corn heavy. I wonder, maybe you got to give it a little shake, balance it out. <clears throat> All right. So I'm um, going to do a giveaway today and then this giveaway will be any of the three whiskeys that we had a sip of tonight. So it's couldn't, the options are this green spot, uh, Chateau Montalena, this E.H. Taylor single barrel, 2018, or the little book part two, any of these three whiskeys you have to choose. Um, I'm going to come up with a question. The first person to answer on my screen gets the sample. All right. So <clears throat> all right. The wine cask that comes from the Irish, the Irish whiskey that I reviewed tonight, um, the owner of that that winery, where is his original country? Well, like, what country was he born in? So maybe that question wasn't very clear. You should probably repeat it. But I think these guys got it. Should have wrote down the question. <laughs> uh, okay, so Tony Nelson got it. Uh, it's Ireland. 
So the owner of the vineyard or the winery is from originally from Ireland, which Tony Nelson was the first person to say, Tony, um, I'm going to put my email address in the bottom here. Send me your information. I will send you a sample of your choosing. Okay. So earlier on, I explained that um, the owner of Chateau Montalena is actually Irish. He bought the, the winery when it was going under. He revived it, uh, made it better. Um, it's survived since he, he purchased it. And then he wanted to collaborate with an Irish company. So he collaborated with Greenspot. All right. So he has Irish roots. Um, Eric Waite is saying that it's Jim Barrett. The research I did, um, says something differently, but we will look into that. And if you're right, then you will also get a sample. <laughs> Either way, it's what I said earlier on the chat that wins the sample. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> James C., thank you very much, buddy. He says, appreciate your insight on these bottles and your generosity in giveaways. Thank you. I appreciate that, buddy. Cheers. This question we asked if you tried any of the Wayne Gretzky whiskey. Uh, I've, I have. I have tried the Wayne Gretzky whiskey. I've tried the uh, red, which I reviewed a long time ago and I did not like. Uh, I've also tried the ice wine cask one, which is okay. It's not bad. I don't mind it. I haven't tried the 99 yet. I do want to buy that, but it's a little bit expensive for how old it is. So uh, I don't plan on buying it very soon anyway, unless I hear like rave things about it and then I'll grab it. Um, they're also in Niagara. So that's another distillery. Maybe Eric can go visit. Um, just haven't been blown away by anything that they put out just yet. So we'll see. What's that? Oh, I said it. Mm. What's up, DH Selves? Hopefully he's on his best behavior tonight. <clears throat> I'm actually going to challenge Eric Waite on that because I want him to show evidence of that claim that he's from Chicago. Because what I read today was the guy that bought the distillery came over from Ireland and saved it. Maybe Jim Barrett was the original owner. That could be it. But I'm going to challenge him. I want I want him to bring that evidence to the table. <clears throat> I drop water. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to add a drop. It's really nice though. I really like it. He knows Jim Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the only owner? There must be more than one then. Got a cruise in his name. Or maybe Jim Barrett's actually from Ireland and you didn't know it. Or his family's from Ireland. I'm not going to look it up now. I'm just going to go by what I read. What you said. What's that? What you said and what I said in the live. That's it. Hmm. So a little bit of water really mellows this out. Um, it's really soft now, actually. <clears throat> really nice. <laughs> Michael, I'll send you a uh, sample too. Eric, thanks for causing so much trouble in my in my uh, live tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs> I think we need to pause it. <laughs> I think we should pause. Uh, <laughs> one of my uh, moderators need to pause Eric Wait. <laughs> so 
So before I part, I want to go through what my, my favorite Irish whiskeys were because it's only fair to do a little bit of a rundown uh, when you do some sort of series on this channel. So number one of all time so far is that Bushmill SMWS 15-year-old pastries and sweet treats. That's incredible stuff. If you guys have an opportunity to pick that bottle up, you have to. I know it's expensive, um, but it'll blow you away because it's so different than any other whiskey you'll ever try in your life. Next up would be the Redbreast 12-year-old cast strength. Also incredible stuff. Honestly, I think I think Irish whiskeys really need to just um, release that cast strength more often because it's you get so many like fresh tropical fruits. It's incredible. Um, next up after that is between the Red Breast 15. Oh, sorry, it's the Ticano 16 year old for sure, and then the Red Breast 15 year old. Um, really like both of those, but the Ticano takes it just because. It's ex bourbon cask. It really gives the um, new make a chance to shine. It's 16 years old, so it's not new at all, but it gives the distillery characteristics a chance to, uh, to shine. So that's what I like about it. Um, all around, really, really good stuff I've had this, this month. I guess the next one would be this one over the Red Breast Lestal, I think, because um, although it's probably a little bit younger than the Lestal, it's got some different elements that i'm not used to the listal is supposed to be oloroso aged but i didn't get a ton of oloroso out of that one i got more sherry out of the 15 year old than i did the listal and then um i, I guess i'll stop it there because that's pretty much what i've reviewed oh no no that west core cast strength was really really nice actually i was very impressed with it for 50 bucks so that one would just fall short of the listal in my opinion but Everything was excellent. I, I was really happy with this. When I first started this channel, I didn't like Irish whiskey. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I wasn't a big fan, um, but I also was very ignorant. I didn't know what was out there. I didn't try a whole bunch of different ones to really experience uh, what Irish whiskey could be like. So because of all those things, I just neglected to buy them. Neglect I avoided them. Um, I'm glad I stopped that. And what really encouraged me to buy irish whiskey was that red breast 12 year old so um if you don't want to spend the money on the smws bush mill get the 12 year old cast strength red breast because you will not be disappointed <clears throat> dh sales is saying yes more irish cast strength i agree um james c's got to run thank you for joining buddy and thank you for the super chat Donald is saying, all awesome. You need to try the Green Spot Chateau. I did. So I, I actually tried the Leo uh, Leoville or Louisville or however you want to pronounce that, Barton. Um, that one is one of the whiskeys that I tried in the blind tasting that Roy from Aquavite sent to me. So really, really nice. Mash and Drum just dropped a super chat. He said, great show tonight and good mix of whiskey. Glad you liked the E.H. Taylor. I'm glad I liked it too. And thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. I actually have to talk to you. So uh, stay tuned. I might either give you a call or send you a text in the next couple minutes. Um, and that's it. You know what? We'll end it there on a high note. <laughs> Although maybe Eric Wade <laughs> stole some of the, the wind out of the sails. But I still love you, Eric. Um, we're going to find out and we'll give you, we'll ensure that everybody is satisfied but if michael is right and and that guy's french then i'll send it to michael but either way it's what i said in the chat so um the original guy that won who was it again either way it doesn't matter uh he'll send me an email and we'll go from there okay and there was a couple other people that i might owe samples to so please email me if i said that i owe you a sample at some point in this stream thanks for joining guys really appreciate it have a good night Cheers. <laughs>